Welcome to the Wild Type Podcast. I'm Melissa Slizzards. I'm Neptune the Chameleon. And, and we're, we're your Reptile, reptile girlies. girlies. Happy to be back. Happy Tuesday. Tune on in to a new episode of the Wild Type Podcast. (laughs) Why did that sound like so like excursion like? Because I was I had my safari voice. On. I was gonna say it sounded it sounded very crocodile hunting. Yeah, like I'm I have my that. little safari hat. I'm, I'm like into taking that. you. Through. That's oh, for yeah. sure what that sounded like. Welcome to. <laughs> yeah. Well, here you are. Yes. Well, and today we have a very interesting episode that we have kind of been hinting at, alluded to. Yeah, yeah. for sure. And we we will have more episodes on the specific topic. Yes, this is just the tip of the yeah. iceberg. There's like so many different ways that we can talk about exotic veterinary care, and so in this one, we yes. really just wanted to cover more of like how necessary are exotic veterinarians. Yeah, what's what's the value? How do they fit right. in the hobby? Yeah. When does it make sense to utilize veterinary care mm-hmm. in different circumstances yeah. and and all that. And it's funny because I definitely feel like in the hobby, there are people that lean one way and people that lean the other way. Yeah. Which is a strange concept to me. Yeah. But I would say I like, I'm probably in the the middle yeah. or more towards the yeah. the vet side. Yeah. Oh, me too. For sure. Yeah. It's, it's just interesting. I feel like there was at least a point in time where people were like very much like a, not necessarily against exotic veterinary care, but like, like I don't need a vet. Right. I can do it myself. You and know, I just, yeah, I'm no, just, I don't, I'm not a big fan of that. Attitude. No, no, no. I can't do it myself. I need no. help. So <laughs> yeah. And I feel like there is like a lot of circumstances where it is absolutely critical. So yes, it's, it's interesting. I know too that we, so if you guys don't know, we prep before every episode. Yes. If it seems like we have this all polished, it's because we prep <laughs> before yes. we and a, hit and, record. And some topics we prep more for than others. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know we wanted to mention like two big scenarios, sickness yes. and injuries mm-hmm. where vets have immense, immense yes. value. And we're talking about this from a keeper's perspective. Mm-hmm. I think from a breeder yes. standpoint, there are, and this is what you were point. kind of saying you're leaning Mm -hmm. towards earlier where there are breeders who maybe have medications on Mm -hmm. hand or have experience or have been trained by a vet on certain Mm -hmm. procedures where they feel comfortable Mm -hmm. doing it themselves. Yeah. That's not me. No, it is not me either. (laughs) So So in any instance of sickness or injury, Mm -hmm. either with my own animals or in the case where we're content creators, where people DM us all the time asking Mm -hmm. for help, I'm like, go to a vet. Like that is not. It's, it's one of those things where it's like, I'll oftentimes, and you, I know you do too, we get so many DMs being like, my pet got, you know, bitten by my the cat or whatever. Off. What do I do? And I'm like, why are you wasting time DMing me, I've ma'am? Seen, <laughs> I've seen broken legs. Yes. Like my commitment broke its arm. What do I do? And I'm like, go to a vet. Like, I don't. This is, I cannot help you from here, sir. Also, <laughs> me being a person on the internet, like, what am I? <laughs> There's nothing I can do to help what you. What am I going to yeah. do? Give you a portable is, x-ray? Like, Yeah. I, I think there's a little bit of a mentality, not necessarily mentality, but I think oftentimes people, especially new beginner keepers who may not have a lot of experience or may be really young, like those circumstances, I feel like for whatever reason, sometimes people just don't think that reptiles need a vet. They don't like, yeah. it, it's not well, their first too, thought in for like some emergency reason. situations, like a fight or flight, you're freaking out. You just mm-hmm. need help from yeah. somewhere. So you're right. just reaching out into the void Doing and you're hoping you yeah. this random person on the internet might be mm-hmm. able to. And in some circumstances, yes, absolutely. We can right. help when it's care or husbandry related. Yeah. I got you. I'm happy to help. But in instances of an emergency where it's a broken arm, it's an injury, like, yeah. or like, critical sickness like yeah you're on, on death's on their door last leg. yeah yeah i think a big part of prep prior to owning a mm-hmm. reptile is yes. determining do you even have a vet in your area because mm-hmm. that's something we see all the time too is people would want to go to the vet they have the means to go to the vet they just but, don't have a vet and i'll get dms being like the closest vet is you know two or three hours for me and i'm like you got to go to them anyway. You better put on a good podcast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get in the car. <laughs> no, it's and it's so hard. And like we've talked about this because mm-hmm. we live in an area where we do have amazing yes. vets with exotic Mul- reptile. Multiple options. Experience. Yeah. And we've both talked about like if we moved away that like 
that's a consideration of like wherever oh, yeah. we would move next would mm-hmm. it would be a prerequisite yeah. to moving was is there a vet I, that you trust i quite literally would not at this point in my life and in my reptile journey i would not move anywhere unless i confirmed that there was and I would honestly probably get a recommendation from or, or try to get a recommendation from like my current vet of like, right, right. hey, do you know anybody in this area yep, who's yep. good? It's a, it's a small circle, especially yeah. when it comes to Exotic. exotics. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So it's I just think that's that's definitely really critical. So before even getting the pet, you should definitely already have like a list of like an emergency vet for like, you know, yep. 24 hour reasons, which but there's then, fewer, fewer yeah. of those realistically to find a 24 mm-hmm. seven vet with exotic experiences, 100%. definitely a minority, mm-hmm. but you should be able to find a, a regular, yeah. yeah, where you can make an appointment mm-hmm. and hopefully they can, you know, yeah. move you to the top of the list if it right. is like an emergency and situation. Honestly, if you don't have reptiles yet, and if you're looking into getting into them, like just consider that because if you, your closest one is three hours away, that's something you very might very well might have to do at some yep. point yep. is make that drive. So yeah, absolutely. So one thing that I think we definitely want to discuss is like, how do you vet your vet? Mm-hmm. Like, how do you make sure your vet is legit? Cause a quick Google search and they're like, we take exotics. Yeah. Uh, exotics is vague, right? It could very be, vague. it could be that birds. Could be it could be a kangaroo. Like yeah. I, I actually, <laughs> this is, random tangent but I one of my old uh, one of the vets that I used to go to one yeah. time I was sitting there and I had I forget which of my animals I had taken in at that point but I had them you know in my lap and I'm sitting there in the waiting room and two ring-tailed lemurs Just casually. showed up in this office oh my gosh <laughs> and I looked That's at him I was so like cool uh what's going be on cool, here? be cool don't <laughs> Don't freak out. Everything is normal. This is not Jumanji. <laughs> like I was like very. <laughs> That's confused. so cool. That reminds me of Sabumafu. Mm-hmm. Oh, I loved that as like a kid. Leap, yeah, no, leap, it was that exact leap. type of lemur. Oh, it was crazy. That show slapped. And they, they, that were, was good. they were like jumping on the door handles. It was crazy. Oh, they had them like out. <laughs> they were on leashes, but yes. oh, okay, but they yes. weren't like in no in little yeah, crates or they something. They were on leashes, so they were kind of contained, Dang. but not really. Yeah, so you you have to vet yeah. your vet though, and just because they say mm-hmm. they have experience with reptiles does not mean they have experience with your species yes for one as someone who's mm-hmm. a chameleon owner they could be experienced in snakes that's mm-hmm. wonderful yeah that does not apply to mm-hmm. my species yeah. in particular and for me somebody who tends to at this point in my reptile keeper journey like have slightly more advanced species or mm-hmm. kind of like rarer species right you're not it's not going to be your leopard geckos yeah. ball pythons veiled mm-hmm. chameleons that are just like rolling through literally one of the times that i had to go in and one of my pets had to have a surgery was it was one of my most exotic species they are like not you know they're kept in captivity quite often but yeah yeah but my vet literally told me she was like i'm letting you know right now i have never operated on this species before but i have operated on x x and x species like right, right. a b c d and like went down Similar, the list yeah mm-hmm. so i So I felt really confident because I was like, okay, she might not have, you know, experience with this species, but she absolutely has tons of experience. Totally. So it's, that's something that you have to consider when vetting your vet is, okay, do they have experience with your same species? And if they don't, do you feel confident in their other experience? Yeah. And their skill set that Mm -hmm. could apply to your situation. So I think a great way to vet your vet, and this is prior to having an emergency situation Mm -hmm. or needing a vet, right? This you're doing your homework, getting someone in place. So then if, and when the time comes, you feel, Mm -hmm. feel good. I think very simply just asking general care husbandry questions is a great place to start. Mm -hmm. And you can usually tell by like the questionnaire that they have you fill out beforehand. Are their care practices up to date? Are Mm -hmm. they recommending red heat bulbs and basking temperatures that are way out of the was their supplement schedule? Mm -hmm. Are they even asking you about supplements? Like, yeah. You know, so I think just asking general husband well, care can be a good place to start. Absolutely. And I think that goes into the importance of you have to know your stuff too. Yes. Like you have to have That's done. That's true. You, you, you get the answers and you're like, sounds good. You don't know right. if you don't know. It's you obviously to, you know, a certain extent, you absolutely should trust your vet, but no vet, no vet. And this is, I'm very, very pro veterinarian, exotic veterinarian, but literally no vet is going to be able to know everything about every exotic species. No person. And be, like yeah, not I mean, even that's just vets. Like, like that's just so, a lot. So I don't want people to hold exotic vets to some like insane standard because it's just not possible. But something that like I've experienced exotic vets do that I think is incredible is 
oftentimes if they don't have experience with that certain situation, they will go, they have a network of colleagues around the country Mm -hmm. from, from all their vet school experience, from, you know, all of their schooling, they have friends that, you know, have different experience than they do. They have friends in other locations. They have people who have, you know, been on different studies or done different things. And so oftentimes, like I've actually had some amazing vets. I've been very lucky who have you know, actually told me, Hey, I haven't experienced this before, but I'm reaching out to all of them. Yeah, she's same thing. They're like, I'm reaching out to, to my circle. Yeah. And they're like, I'm going to reach out to this vet who's been at this zoo yes. for 20 plus yes. years and has mm-hmm. experience in this situation. Mm-hmm. And they were like consulting yeah. the entire time. Like, yeah. And I was like, that's, that's amazing. And that's incredible. And so you, I don't want people to hold exotic vets to like that insane standard because they are in, they, they have a lot of resources and even if they personally don't have that experience or don't have that knowledge, they are typically are able to find that from elsewhere, which yeah. I think is just a really, really great option. There's also tons of amazing mm-hmm. general husbandry care yes. practices. And if your care and husbandry is on point, mm-hmm. in theory, mm-hmm. you won't have to go to the vet unless there's these weird one-off, right. you know, sicknesses right. or injuries or something mm-hmm. like that, in which case then your vet should have that experience in those types totally. of situations. It's out of your, your knowledge. Totally. But there's so many amazing yes. care husbandry resources, amazing Mm -hmm. podcasts, amazing YouTube channels, Mm -hmm. TikToks, research papers that are easily accessible for us consumers to digest. Like there's so many different ways that we can Mm -hmm. try and keep up on our day-to-day care that we don't necessarily have to put that full responsibility just on our vet. And and I think that goes down to, like you said, the, the the resources and looking at your information and doing all of your research. Because if you know what you're talking about and your vet knows what they're talking about, then you guys are almost able to not necessarily challenge each other on things, but it's like just an educated conversation. Yes, because if yeah. you if you know what you're doing, and even if and honestly, I've been corrected by my vets on different things of like, hey, that's actually a little bit outdated. And I was like, I had no idea. Right. So it's you can both learn stuff from each other and a a really good vet should listen and trust the owner because the owner knows their animal the best right. and their behavior the best. And then they can, you know, provide their expertise on top of that to help assist. And if there's that mutual respect and understanding, yeah. there could also be instances where maybe the vet is the one that has the outdated care, right? Sure. Because yeah. there are just so many species that they're mm-hmm. seen and you be like, mm-hmm. hey, I like there's actually this research that came out yeah. or this thing or whatever. And you can share those resources totally with your vet. Mm-hmm. And I think that that goes both yeah. ways. Amazing. It, it really should be like a relationship. I mean, that is like one of those things. And like, I'm very, very blessed to have great vets and I've been lucky with that and having those relationships, but that's what comes down to like vetting your vet and making sure that like you guys have similar viewpoints and you, you know, share some of the same information. And even yep. if you don't share the same information, you're able to have those conversations yeah. Yeah. with that mutual respect for each other. Absolutely. So I think if you can get referrals, if mm-hmm. you can get, um, like Google reviews or maybe mm-hmm. reptile Facebook groups that can yeah. give recommendations in your area to an exotic vet, mm-hmm. that's really great. If your breeder who you're purchasing from yeah. is local and they have ones that they can do, spend the time to have the questionnaire and mm-hmm. really understand their knowledge of yeah. your species. Because simply calling and be like, do you have experience with chameleons? And they're like, yeah. And you're like, okay, bye. Yeah. Like that's not, in my opinion, sufficient. Because if you've seen one veil chameleon totally. in the last 20 years, oh yeah, at well, all. <laughs> and, my, and my go-to... <laughs> I have a little funny story about this, but my, my go-to funny story about vets is that I had an emergency situation where I wasn't fully prepared, not necessarily fully emergency, but it was like a, I I went to three different vets at different times because my chameleon was sick and it ended up being environmental. My apartment had low air quality and that was like the big issue that we later found out. But when I was in the process of trying to find a really good reptile vet, one of the ones that I went to was trying to convince me that my male panther chameleon was a female. And Barney at this time was like full, full grown, grown, which full means grown. he had his full yeah. blues, greens. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And anybody who knows anything about panther chameleons, they're, they're like peacocks. The male is obviously a male. The females are obviously female they're like once a they get to maturity. Color. Yeah, and then yes. the males are all kinds of colors. Yeah, and, and that vet, to his defense, he was going off of the weight. And Barney was a little bit on the smaller side. And I like had confirmed with his breeder that, that you know his his dad He's was also a, on the smaller side. Guy. Yeah. He was also a hybrid, so he had like you know mixed genes. And so he was just a 
little on the smaller side. And so that was normal for me. I knew that. But the vet was like, he only weighs X amount of grams and that's a female. And I was like, sir. And Do you he, not see the and, rainbow colors? And, and he actually, wow. and he actually challenged me, which like, I typically like encourage my vets to challenge me. Sure, like, sure, please, sure. please. Yeah. Like if I'm wrong about something, I want to know. And I will always admit when I'm wrong about something. But <laughs> this vet literally looked at me and he was like, so what exactly makes you think that he's a male? And I looked at him and I was like, his breeder told me he's a male, his coloration that is very obvious. And I frequently find sperm plugs in his enclosure. The hemipenal bulge. Yeah. I mean, that's fair for him to ask. It is. I just would have scooped Barney up and be like, thank you so much. Have a lovely day. That's essentially <laughs> what happened after that. Because oh, I, gosh. well, and when he asked me that question, I actually laughed because I thought he was kidding. And then he looked at me. it was so obvious. It was so obvious. Yeah. And he looked at me very seriously and was like, so what makes you think that? I was like, oh, you're not you're not joking. So I have a similar <laughs> story time. So I get tons of people DMing. Luckily, mm -hmm. we both have amazing vets in our yes. area, right? Yes. That's why we're like team pro vet. And I realized I said I was in the middle. I, that's a lie. I'm definitely like, <laughs> please, take, please take your commitment <laughs> yeah. to the vet. Yes. I just tend to be like, I'm Switzerland. I'm in the middle. I but know. this one, no, I'm definitely team vet. Yes. But I had someone DMing me and they're like, hey, I took my chameleon to the vet, you know, because they were mm -hmm. needing help. It was um, a veil chameleon. And they're like, you're not going to believe this. I was in the room. My vet pulls up on their computer your YouTube video <gasps> on how to sex a veil chameleon. That's incredible. I with love the person that. in the room. I love that. Like, and they watch my videos, right? Because they're DMing me. Yeah. And they're like, I kid you not. They pulled up your video on how to sex a veil, which oh you can gosh. sex those guys right out of the egg. Oh, yeah. Like, it yeah, is a very, very simple mm -hmm. thing. But you have to know how to do it. And it's yeah. like their tarsal spurs, whatever. But like, mm -hmm. if you don't know, yeah. and like, I'm all for resources and whatever, of course. but to me, that is a very, very basic thing. Like yeah. sexing an adult panther chameleon. Yes. If you know anything, yes. you know that. That's why I was so shell-shocked when he was asking me that. I was like, oh, this isn't a joke. We're okay. Yeah. And I obviously never took Barney back. <laughs> no. And I was flattered. I was yeah. like, wow, thanks for watching my, yeah. Yeah. my YouTube video. Right. But yeah. So not all vets are created equal. Mm -hmm. You but know, that doesn't mean that there aren't incredible ones out there. And it yes. doesn't mean that you should skimp on vet care because yes. you should. It just might you take just have you... to make sure that they're yes. they're legit. And it's a little bit of a process. I mean, like I, I mean, same with human doctors, yeah. right? Like, like I went through like three yeah. different vets before I found my the first one that I really, really loved. And then she moved away. And then my second one now has been just phenomenal. So yeah. it's like, it, you know, it's also poop we want to <laughs> i intentionally said it like that. by the way poop. okay let me clarify <laughs> fecal tests okay yes this is so we also important. just to wrap this up we also want to mention that vets great for for injuries mm -hmm. sickness like mm -hmm. scenarios where you mm -hmm. don't know what's going on your yeah. care is on point whatever but getting a fecal test done it's while so important. you can do them at home i'm not discounting that you're not going to catch me mm -hmm. putting a slide no. of poop under a microscope and Absolutely knowing what's not. going on yeah some I don't, people I don't love that. that. I don't have that training. <laughs> Some people love that. Yeah. You know, that's great. If Go that, for it. If that's your GM, more power to you. I'm personally jealous. I can't. I <laughs> will be going to my vet. Yes. They typically require you do some sort of wellness exam. However, that is true. But I will say, at least in my experience with vets, a lot of times, if that animal has had a wellness exam at that vet in the past yes you have to have one initial yes they basically have to have a file they have to physically see the mm -hmm. animal yeah. then they'll do a fecal test then mm -hmm. usually which i think is what you're getting at yes. you can do annual yes. fecal tests without them having to bring in the animal but if they find anything weird in the poop they will require you to bring the animal yeah in which after totally the totally makes but sense in case that's what I, but that's what I, on. I love that about vets because a lot yeah. of times like i'll just like when Barney was on his decline, like I, you know, about like six or eight months before was like, okay, I want to get this checked and, you know, sent it to the lab and all that because I just wanted to rule that out. Yeah. So it's, that's always, a, you really should be doing fecal tests frequently. Future topics we would love to talk about. Mm -hmm. The costs of exotic yes. vets because thinking the fecal test and then the exam fee, I'm like, cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. Yeah, it's crazy. So we should totally do a future episode on like the cost of exotic mm -hmm. vets. Honestly, I'm going to have to go back and find all my receipts, which yeah. I do save for tax purposes. But <laughs> <laughs> we'll, do some, we'll do some homework on yeah. that. So I think that'd be really fun. And then maybe we could do like a future story time of like yeah. specific you know, times we've gone to the vet and get into the so nitty gritty. I have so many story times and uh, some good, some sad. Yeah, some, some have a happy ending, yeah. some have a not so 
mm-hmm. not so good ending. Yeah. But that's just the the realities. And you guys yeah. know we don't sugarcoat it. No. We are fully yeah. transparent and honest with you guys, and this will be no mm-hmm. different. So, but I think to answer the question, do we need exotic vets? The answer yes. is a resounding hell yes. But a little caveat, a little asterisk of do we need good yes. exotic vets? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And there are a lot out there. Just go find them, vet them. It'll be great. Vet your vet. Yeah. And then we do want to give a quick shout out, guys. We will be yeah. at NRBC Dallas. We we mentioned earlier that we need to sit down mm-hmm. and like go through our, our yes. expos and figure out which ones we're going to. So we finally settled on mm-hmm. our first one for the year is yep. going to be NRBC Dallas because it's a new location. Yeah. It's a brand new spot. Like yeah. It's a brand new, new venue. venue. Yeah. yeah. I'm really excited to see the new venue too. So it's going to be April 13th and 14th. Mm-hmm. We'll probably be there both days. Probably. I don't think I have anything else going on. Yeah, it's a it's yeah. a big, big weekend. We'll 100% be there Saturday, potentially Sunday too, too. so yeah, TBD. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But we'll post on our socials, like, mm-hmm. confirming which days we're, mm-hmm. we're going to be there. But very excited to do that. If you see us, please say hi. Please. Okay? Don't we're be not, afraid. We're yeah. so nice, I swear. <laughs> yeah. When, and we would love to chat with you guys, yeah. especially for the podcast. Mm-hmm. You know, that'd be and our first time. we will have stickers. Yes. That we will be handing out. Yes. So, so please come say else. hi. Come, come get, get a sticker. sticker. Yeah. 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 We don't we don't bite. <laughs> no. Our reptiles do. We don't. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> April showers bring Pangea sales. They're coming out strong with a 20% off sale on egg organizers and hatch combo for any of our breeder listeners. And if you're in the market for new branches, they'll be 15% off. This includes Manzanita, Grapevine, Ghostwood, and Junglewood. Looking for a new mister? They'll be doing a 15% off sale for Pangea Hand Misters and Exoterra Pump Misters. And last but not least, at the very end of April, you get a free sleeve of small bio cups with a purchase of $75 or more. Check out PangeaReptile.com. If you're looking for a new enclosure for one of your critters, be sure to check out the ones from Zen Habitats. Every enclosure is customizable, allowing you to mimic nature and provide the various UVB and heat gradients required for your species, which means they'll work great for both tropical and arid environments. One of our very favorite things is how easy Zen makes it to stack multiple enclosures with their stacking spacers and their extension kits allow you to be even more efficient with your space. All of their enclosures, stands, and spacers come with a five-year warranty and free shipping on all their orders. Check out zenhabitats.com for your next enclosure. Need crickets delivered to your doorstep for all of your hungry reptile and amphibian friends? Josh's Frogs has got you covered. We've mentioned so many times on the pod how convenient, well-priced, and healthy it is to buy your bugs online. Josh's Frogs now offers auto delivery for your commonly ordered items. You choose the products, frequency, and preferred delivery day. They take care of the rest. They offer a range of feeder cricket sizes to fit your pet's needs, all the way from pinheads up to one inch. Head on over to joshesfrogs.com and use coupon code THEWILDTYPE10 to save 10% on your next order of live crickets. Moving on to our next voice message. Yes. I'm so excited. Okay. Ah. And just a reminder, while she pulls that up, if you want to submit us a voice message, which we would love if you do, you just have to go onto Spotify. This is only through Spotify. YouTube doesn't have this feature. And if you go into the description of any of our episodes, there'll be a link in there to send a Mm -hmm. voice message and you go in there, record it. We get it. And then we'll play on the pod. We get very excited. It's very fun because we love just getting to actually hear your voices. That's not something, you know, we get to do very often. So we're here for it. Excited. Okay. Is your volume up? Let me, great question. Fabulous question. Yes, it is. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Hello, my name is JW from Jaded Exotics. And I was wondering what got you guys started into keeping reptiles or what really sparked your interest in reptile keeping? And I also just wanted to say that you guys are the reason that I got into reptile keeping. So thank you for that. And yeah, have a great rest of your day. Bye bye. Bye bye. This is so cute. You're the sweetest. Thank you so much. That's that such is a, a classic reptile keeper. Classic question. A classic yeah, question. We love that. Well, first off, thank you for letting yeah. us know that you got into that to reptiles. That like, warms like, my heart. That like makes me want to tear up a little bit. Whenever I get DMs like I got a chameleon because of you, I'm like. I'll, so I'll, I'll cry right here. So sweet. <laughs> okay. Do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? Sure. Yeah. So honestly, mine's, pr- mine's a pretty basic answer. If I'm being really honest, it's the fact that I was one of those Steve Irwin obsessed kiddos. So I used to get up every Saturday morning with my dad and watch Steve Irwin's like kid show. He had the, the, kid crocodile hunter version i forget exactly what it was called I think it was like the croc files or something mm-hmm. and so i would get up every saturday morning and watch that with my dad and it was like a bonding thing for me and my dad too and uh, i just got really obsessed with 
reptiles in general. And then it wasn't until that was throughout like all my childhood. But quite frankly, back then, you know, the 90s, early 2000s, I literally didn't even know that you could keep like reptiles in your on house. TV. Yeah. yeah. And it wasn't until I walked into my second grade science teacher's class and in the back of the lab, she had like several enclosures. And I was like, what is that? And I got very excited. And so I like started talking to her about them. And she had a couple of leopard geckos, a toke gecko, I think a corn snake, and maybe like one or two other things. She, had, I think she had at least like four or five yeah. reptiles in there. And so I just got super excited because I was like, I didn't even realize. That's so Miss Frizzle. Oh, it was totally Miss Frizzle vibes. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Love it that. It was incredible. And so, Second grade, that's young. Oh, no, no, no. Seventh. Did oh. I say second? Yeah. Oh, I screwed that up. I was 13. <laughs> I was like, you're a baby. <laughs> no, no, no. So it was probably second grade that I was like watching the crocodile hunter grade. stuff, but seventh grade. Oh, okay. So like all seventh through grade. childhood, I was reptile obsessed okay, from okay. the crocodile Got it, got it, got it. But, but then, then in real life, yes. you saw them seventh yes. grade. I'm following you now. Yes. Okay. Sorry. So sorry if I, <laughs> my bad if I said, <laughs> like, I, I might have said the wrong thing. But um, so when I realized that you could keep them, I got super excited and I started talking to my teacher and I started like helping her kind of feed them and yeah. do all that. And then because I w- kind of had like volunteered myself as like her assistant a little bit she asked me if I would want to take them home over not all of them but like one of them home over like Christmas break and then spring break and so insane (laughs) but the very first one that I took home for Christmas break for two weeks was a toe cake echo why not Go, go big. I'll never forget. I asked her, I was like, can I hold him? And she goes, absolutely do not touch it. And I was like, what? You look, do not pet. That was the first time I learned how intense toke gecko bites can be. I did yeah. not experience it, but I heard from my teacher. <laughs> and then after that, I took a leopard gecko home for spring break. And then I became obsessed. The rest and is history. Eventually yeah. got Charlie. And you guys will have to listen to older episodes mm-hmm. where we talk about how you convince your dad oh, yeah, to get Charlie. Because that's, one of, that's that one of my story. favorites. Yeah. I think it was like our very first, first it, episode. First couple for sure. Yeah. yeah. No, that's great. I don't have like a specific like moment, aha moment, but like always had tons of pets mm-hmm. growing up. You like up with like four dogs, which four dogs, two cats, wild. horses, fish, gerbils, like yeah, tons works. of pets. Uh, like my family is very like animal. Honestly, mine was too. We had like a mix of animal stuff. friendly. Yeah. yeah. And like I love going to the zoo. We had like a big state zoo, mm-hmm. like not a little city zoo, like a big state school, yeah. state zoo very close by so like they had all kinds of mm-hmm. animals like watching Zabumafu like on tv oh, all yeah. the all the oddballs Absolutely. um so i've always just been like really into animals and then for me specifically with reptiles one of my siblings had um a bearded dragon i forgot about that yeah, yeah so that was my first like mm-hmm. exposure to to having one but then i saw a chameleon on the internet and i was like whoa like that's next level. Whoa, that's, that's a cool, that's cool lizard. Pretty sweet. Yeah. Oh, also, whenever you go to Petco, PetSmart, I always like look at them in yeah, the yeah. little displays. Um, but yeah, the reason I got a panther chameleon in my first reptile mm-hmm. was because I saw one online. I was like, oh, that's, that's a cool animal. That's exactly what sucked me back in. Yeah, for sure. Was just social media. Yep. So. Blame it on the internet. Yeah, so it's... there you go. That's how we got into reptiles. Mm-hmm. But you can share us your stories yeah. in, in the comments mm-hmm. of how you guys got started with with reptiles. Everyone's we'll got their own know. journey. We'll yeah, let us know. We would love to hear it. Yeah, we were not herpers though. A lot of people start out like catching yeah. stuff. Well, okay, and then... as a kid, I very much was. I'm... But not keeping it as a pet though. No, 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 no. I mean, like, I a lot would. Of people catch it I would and keep try. It. My mother would never let me. Yeah, but, probably but I, for the best. Yeah, I definitely had frogs in my pockets a handful of times as a child, but it's fine. <laughs> not me. I kept. <laughs> but yes, let us know how you guys got started, yeah. and then we'll wrap this up with another blind ranking. But this one's going to be different. I'm excited about this one. I think this one's really fun. So it's different. I'm I'm nervous. We're going to be ranking essentially attributes or like things that we love about each other. Yes. So I came up with a list of ones about you and you came up with ones about me and we're going to yes. rank our own. So like I'll be ranking things about me, but it's things that she has come you up with. You guys will follow, follow along. Yeah. I think it'll make it's a more confusing. sense while, <laughs> while we do it. Yeah. But, um, but you don't know my list and I don't mm-hmm. know your list. Nope. And I will say when I wrote mine, we did not put the caveat things that we love about each other. True. So mine are not necessarily all things oh, that okay. I would like. Okay. They're just general attributes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's fair. Yeah. A lot of them I do. One of them is not going to make sense. I just, with had that. That, I just had that in my head of like things that like I personally love and appreciate about you. Was okay. Like, so that was more of a me thing. Okay. 
Because one of these is if that's the is not going to make sense going off of that. So I just want to put okay. the little caveat so, that I did not. <laughs> so we are blind ranking attributes about each other. Yes. And we're going to be ranking our own, but we came up with them for each other. Yeah. So you want to go first? Do you want me to go first? <laughs> you never want to go first. <laughs> I can. I just am nervous because like this is this is the thing, guys. When we do these blind rankings, they're truly blind. Like you yeah, don't yeah, yeah. know. So uh-huh. I'm like, are we going to be on like the same? Similar? Because there are, there are times that when we're picking our things, we definitely, it's like, oh, you went a different direction with that. Yeah, I you and your gonna... deviled eggs. What are you, appetizers? Yeah. I'm here. from, I'm, oh, okay, come on. <laughs> deviled eggs are absolutely an appetizer. <laughs> but I see for that one, I was thinking restaurant appetizers. And that's and where that's where our that's what I'm saying they, though. We take you were different doing like house sometimes. party appetizers. Yes. And if I'm going to the restaurant, I'm not getting bacon wrapped dates and deviled eggs on the menu. I'm getting mozzarella sticks and hold, fried pickles. You've been holding on to that one for a minute. Because <laughs> I think you did me dirty. I gave you the like these amazing appetizers. And you're like meatballs, dates, eggs, and I'm like. We clearly need to prep a little bit better. That's what I'm saying. On so that's why I'm nervous because I feel like I've been burned a little in past episodes. So, uh, Well, maybe I'll get burned this time. We'll see. Okay. So these are just general attributes. One through five, you got pick, pick okay. how you rank them. Okay. First one I kind of combined, okay. fashion style, home decor. Oh, so just like general style, yeah. I guess. But specifically like... With your home decor, fashion, I'm not gonna lie. kind of style. I, I really love that about myself. <laughs> I love that too. I wish you guys could see her home oh, and like how it's all decorated. I, I haven't shared it yet, but I will be sharing that on TikTok very, very soon. Probably Instagram too. So stay tuned because yeah, the house is finally coming together. Yeah, it's really, really cool. I'm obsessed with it. And because so. I come over all the time to do episodes, I've seen like, she's like, look at this new rug and look yeah, at this new. Yeah. It's, and it's all very cool. It's so. taken a long time post-wedding to kind of get it all together, but we're almost there. So all right, one through five. Let's see. Honestly, that's either going to be a two or a three, but I'm nervous to put it at two. So I'm going to put my style at number three okay okay down the middle okay okay next up loyalty to friends oh that's probably mm, that might be number one it's pretty good one i like that one a lot i she's I'm, a ride or die i'm real and i'm not just saying that because we're like podcast co-hosts and i'm being filmed right now no, like this is i know I'm, something you take pride in yeah, i admire I, in you it's probably it's like not to like brag on myself, but it's definitely one of my biggest strengths. Like I will literally physically fight for my friends. <laughs> like, so I'm probably going to put that at number one. I, a good I, I think that's probably, that's definitely one of my, like, I think strengths in my life. So I think that's number one. Okay. I can dig with that. So then, so just for you guys to know, we did a little inspo for this because we mm-hmm. saw the TikTok where someone else yes. was doing blind rankings, but they it, did the opposite yes for their own characteristics and one of the guys said hair so i'm gonna put the next one as your hair because i know you have like mixed feelings i have such mixed feelings about my hair my hair drives me absolutely insane because it has no volume whatsoever we can blow dry in like 10 seconds which is fabulous so it's very convenient on the day-to-day but for like formal events and stuff i want to pull my hair out so i'm probably going to put that at number four quite frankly because i Mm. it's a love-hate relationship my hair is a love-hate relationship for sure i get that it's convenient but annoying so okay that seems fair okay you're gonna think this next one's hilarious (laughs) oh god i'm scared Um, i put it as your ability to fight is how i wrote it (laughs) but 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 in the context of what you alluded to before yeah and by this i mean like if you need someone in your corner yeah like it's, you're my girl. Like whenever I get some nasty comment, like oh. on social media, she's like, pull me in coach. And she'll just, Let me at him. Let me at him. And she'll just like comment and just be like, listen, buster. And just like rip him a new one in the most eloquently well-worded, well-written, politically correct, but like Thank stab you. you in the heart, Thank like you. type I, of comment. I really pride myself on that. So I really appreciate that. And like, I feel like everyone needs a friend like that. I I'm for sure and the you're friend. you're so if, good at it. If you're feeling creeped out at a bar by a man, you definitely want me there. So when like, I say ability to fight, I'm not like talking like physical, physically fighting, no. but your ability to like step up and like. I appreciate that. Thank you. That's yeah. very sweet. It's a funny way of phrasing it, but it's Yeah, that's why I'm like, let me clarify. 
Honestly, I think I'm going to put that right up there with with loyalty, with number two. Two? Yeah. Okay. And then I think I only have five left, which yeah. I'm scared now. I feel okay, like I so always to do round this. us out, your love for animals and the oddities. <laughs> of course, that's number five. <laughs> Below hair. <laughs> I should have, hair should have been last. Yeah. Hair should have been last. I was for trying sure. to give you a freebie for your no, five, but I, I appreciate that. You put it out for us. So. I feel like top one through three is for sure accurate, yeah. but I, I would have put my animal stuff as four. But, but I feel good about that. That yeah. was good. Thank yeah. you. I appreciate the compliments. Phew. <laughs> that was nerve wracking. Now okay. I'm scared. Now I'm in the hot <sighs> seat. No, I'm worried. Okay. All right. <laughs> the first one is really funny, and we definitely mentioned it in a recent episode. Okay. And I'm cracking up because I'm literally looking at a perfect example of it. Your sock collection slash obsession. Stop it. <laughs> I love this about you. The ones Genuinely, I'm wearing right now are strawberries. They're literally like, I love this about you because every time I see your socks and you're so polite, you always like take your shoes off when you enter yeah. my home and like yeah. all these things, you're wonderful. But it's just every time you take your shoes off in my house, I'm always like, what are they today? <laughs> like, <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> it literally, it's just a random thing about you that I adore and think is like so unique and fun yeah i always wear cool socks i know i have a massive collection i'm going to use the word collection i used to have this is a little team but like my undies and socks in the same same drawer which i feel like is pretty that's pretty par for the course but you definitely need a separate drawer so i have just a sock drawer like they just took over and now i just have and then i have a backup sock drawer because they're (laughs) they're not my daily wears they're like honestly that makes perfect my like winter socks or whatever but like they don't fit in Mm -hmm. my big big sock drawer so perfect sense i appreciate that yeah quirky socks are yes. and they are always matching i won't oh, do yeah. like no, mismatching you, you never mismatch mismatching mm-hmm. socks like they have to no. be the yeah the same which sock. makes me wonder have you ever like lost any of like yeah. your favorites that's upsetting especially in college when you're oh, in like communal you're moving all like, the time washers yeah. and stuff like that mm-hmm. yeah i do have cheerio socks and cheerios are like one of my favorite cereals mm-hmm. and for like six months i lost one of them but i have a little <laughs> This is so weird. In my drawer, I have a little corner. We'll yeah. have like the singletons, you know, that just kind of like. I, wait, no, I actually do that too. I don't have as many like, cool socks, but I do that Because like my maybe socks. my loads got like right. mixed up or whatever, right? right? And one made or it into one load. Or, or eventually one day when you pull out that washer, you'll find it in the back. So I had my little Cheerio <laughs> sock sitting in the corner. Just waiting for its mate. I found it. And I was like reunited. And they're one of my favorite pairs to. They're, they have now been made whole. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so my love for socks, I'm going to put number two. Okay. I'm a big fan of, oh, well, of my I'm socks. I, I'm so. glad I picked that one then. Yeah. I, th- I thought that was a good one. And it's just something I find really unique and quirky about you that I like. Yeah. I <laughs> okay. like my socks. My next one, I didn't quite know how to word this because you can word it in like four different ways. So I'm just going to say all of them. Okay. But it's your drive, determination, and or work ethic. Oh. This is something that... I admire because I I don't lack it, but I struggle with it from time to time. And so you're somebody that's like very, very inspiring in that way Aww. because I literally don't know anybody who works harder than you. <laughs> I appreciate that. But you're just so driven, you know? I, I wonder sometimes in like, this is kind of like a little vulnerable moment of honesty. If like with my friendships, if it's ever like too much or intimidating or unintentionally makes my friends feel like, you know, like trying to I could see keep that, up or I don't, but, but it's like, I'm just doing my thing. You yeah, do your thing. Yeah. Like, so I just never wanted to come across no. as like any type of way. And honestly, if it ever did, I would say that that's kind of almost like an insecurity in the other person mm-hmm. kind of a vibe because like. It, if anything, it's motivating for me. So I, I don't view that as a negative. I think it's something really admirable, if anything. Okay, okay. So, well, that, that's good. Yeah. It's something I take pride in. And mm-hmm. I always, always say, I'm like, I'm not the smartest person, mm-hmm. but I will be one of the hardest workers I, that's, in the room. That's accurate. But you're also wickedly smart as well. So okay. I appreciate that. <laughs> but, you know, there's definitely yeah. people who are way smarter. I was like, yeah. but I will outwork you. Oh, so. <laughs> it, she'll literally outwork it, you and your mom. I don't know who else she'll outwork, but it's everybody. But it's, it's something I do take pride in and mm-hmm. really enjoy about myself. As so should. as you should, I'm tempted to put it as my number one. I could see that. But then that only leaves me three, four and five. Yeah. <laughs> We're I feel only like on I, made, I was a little ambitious with the socks, but that's okay. We're just gonna go for it. That's okay. All right. So number one. Yep. I, okay. I think that's a good one. Now the next one is also the hair, but specifically your red hair. Yeah. 
this is yeah. I know it can be mixed mixed feelings sometimes too. I would say it's overwhelmingly positive. Agreed. And it is a big defining Mm -hmm. characteristic for me. Like I've always had red hair Mm -hmm. and you guys don't know this, but no one in my family has red hair. None of my siblings do. My parents don't Mm -hmm. like so it's a really I mean, kind of an oddball thing. It's a recessive, recessive dream, gene. So, but you know. there are you see like families that are just all true redheads, yeah, or like true. siblings mm-hmm. that are all redheads. Mm-hmm. Like that's not yeah. the case for me, even in my extended family. Like I have a family member who it's so random, but one of her babies is as he's getting older, starting to have more like strawberry blonde, like mm-hmm. reddish hair, and it's so funny because only his aunt has red hair so it's like weird to see yeah. how it like pops yeah, yeah, up in yeah. the family no yeah. totally no it's been a big thing for me and something that i've always like taken pride in mm-hmm. i feel like redhead girls are kind of seen as like a positive kind of novelty thing yeah. and then redhead guys get like bullied that's fair like I, bad I, that's fair they sad. get the like the jokes and everything and like bullied as a kid oh, and whatever I but really then like redhead that. girls are like Ooh, yeah. and all like whatever about Aww. it so i I got the the longer stick of yeah. the. Of oh, the two, that's but, so weird. I hadn't thought so about I've it. So I've always had very positive mm-hmm. experience with it, and so yeah. as a result, it's something that I've like come to yeah, love like, about yourself. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So I'll put it at number four. Okay, that's pretty solid. Solid. Okay, the next one, which I think you will also like, is your strategic thinking brain. Oh. <laughs> Again, this is another. Like I'm listening to like imagining myself as a pod listener and being like, what? <laughs> what? So what I mean by that is there are, especially with us both being content creators, there are often times that like you and I will be chatting about things and we just think about things very differently. Yeah. But you have a very, very strategic, logical brain versus I feel like I'm a little bit more like, and so. <laughs> It's no, very you're, helpful. You're like a creative right. through and through. Yeah. Like every fiber of your yeah. being is like For screams sure. creative. And not to say I don't have creative, you not have, to say you don't have like you have a lot of creativity. Strategic, as well. but yeah. like yours is like majority, I would mm-hmm. say, is the creative yes. element. So maybe I can give an example for the pod. When we were launching Mm -hmm. the podcast, Mm -hmm. we were very thoughtful and strategic, I'll use that Mm -hmm. word, as how and when we were and how we're going to roll out the episodes and we did giveaways and like this was all very intentional with the goal of like how can we build as much hype and enthusiasm Mm -hmm. and get the snowball like rolling right out of the gate. We wanted to come out strong. We did not want to like trickle it out or like we wanted it like everything was very intentional Mm -hmm. and i feel like a lot of those were kind of like my absolutely my ideas of like hey what if we did this hey what and you're Mm -hmm. oh we could do that and we could do this and like versus i was like doodling our leaves (laughs) which (laughs) look great no i know but it's like but that's why we make such a great team and honestly it's like we have different strengths but that's one of my favorite of your strengths and even yeah not just as like a podcast partner but also just as like mutual content creators because you sometimes we'll like mention ideas or things that are more strategic in thought that like I have not thought of, Mm -hmm. you know? And so you're- This is a very logical, like- Very. Very. A plus B equals C. Yes. Which is super helpful and wonderful. So I love that. I'm going to put it number five. Okay. Because I don't want to do the same thing you do it. And then I I literally, (laughs) I do it every freaking time. The last one. It's so annoying. So I'm learning from you. I did put hair at four and you put hair at four, but- So do we have three left? Yes. Three is the- I- I think you made the right decision. Okay. So number three is going to be your supportive nature. Aww. And that is something that like I just, I know no matter good or bad, whatever the case may be, I can literally always call you and you like be there for me. Even if it's not like yeah. right that second, like whenever you get to your phone or whatever, like you. But if you sent me like 911, like oh, and kept calling me, I'd be there. like, yeah, okay. It's, mm-hmm. it's just like you it's very similar like what you were saying of like my ride or dinus. It's it's yeah. very much like that. But that's I, a better way of putting it than ability to <laughs> ability to find it's, or why I said being loyal. I guess they kind of all go they go together. They go yeah. together. But I think for you it's just like you are such great support for people. Like you you are just somebody that people can really like lean on for things. And I think that is something that I appreciate that. I adore about you. Yeah, I'll I'll be your number one cheerleader. Like for if sure. you're in my corner, oh, yeah. I'm like, you name it. Oh yeah. You need it. I'm mm-hmm. I'm also, there. The the cheerleader aspect I think goes hand in hand with that very much. Like that's you're just not just supportive, but like like I'm rooting you're for you. Always, you're always yeah. rooting you're always rooting for your people. And I think that's 
Just yeah, really and if special. there's anything that I can do to like mm-hmm. help, like I'm a I'm a big helper, and like I get a lot yeah. of fulfillment in other people's success. Totally. And if I had a hand mm-hmm. in that, then I'm like, yay, go team! <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're, you're no. a huge cheerleader and support system. Yeah. No, I yeah three. I think that's a. I a think great, that's, I you kind of nailed it. Yeah. yeah I mean, my sure. socks might be a little high on the. <laughs> A little too high, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> the list. But it was the first one, so I didn't know yeah. what we were working with. I, I did that on purpose. I wasn't trying to... to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I get you. No, I think that's that's great. And I'm realizing people will roast each other. This is like the opposite of roasting. <laughs> we're just like hyping each other up. You're like, you're yeah, awesome. <laughs> I love everything about you. <laughs> yeah, great. Here's all the reasons why. Yeah. Well, so like I said, this was like just going to be like attributes of mm-hmm. random things. And I'm like, it's way easier to think of attributes for you that was than is for me. S- so I'm like, let's swap it. Selfishly, that's exactly why we did it. Because we yeah. were like, I am having a hard time thinking about things for myself. I can think of five things for you right now. So yeah. let's do that let's do that yeah Yeah. so a little bit different of a a ranking i guess not really one you guys can participate in but maybe send your friend like a hype your friends up yeah a little message or something of just like something that you you enjoy about that because i think it's important you should always tell your friends what you love about them yeah always even if it's just their socks (laughs) or their their (laughs) new plant that they got for their house (laughs) yes you you are always hyping me up about those those are great those are great well we hope to see you guys at nrbc dallas if you see us please say hi don't worry though we have other expos planned for the remainder of the Mm -hmm. year so we will announce those as we solidify Mm -hmm. and they get closer to the Mm -hmm. the dates and all that but yeah we're so excited we can't wait to see you guys at expos and just thank you guys so much for listening we love you and we appreciate you yeah make sure to follow the pod Mm -hmm. at the wild type podcast subscribe drop us a comment leave us a review leave us a voice message the whole shebang otherwise i'm neptune the chameleon i'm also slizards and we'll see you guys in the next one bye guys